Hey guys, it's X and Shadow, and welcome back to Let's Play Banjo Tooie. In the last part, we explored some of the stop and swap stuff in the overworld, and in this part, we're going to be exploring the fourth level of the game, Jolly Rogers Lagoon. Now, the interesting thing about this level is that it's sort of split into two different halves. The first half is the more unorthodox of the two, and it's basically this sort of lake town uh, resort sort of tourist trappy area. You know, there's a bar, there's a thrift shop, there's like some sightseeing stuff. You know, it's if you've ever gone like to a lake house or to uh, a beach house for the summer, you know this area pretty damn well, you know, that the tourists are all designed around one season, where it's just like, it, well, the tourists are only here for one season, you know, the entire town is built around these tourists. Anyway, uh, when it comes to gameplay-wise, the first thing you're going to want to do, because I forgot to do this the first time I played the game, is uh, break open these little weird-looking patches of ground on the on the ground. Yeah. Use the bill drill to do that, and in there you will find doubloons, and you're gonna need to find most of those if you wanna get all the stuff in this opening area, because while a little bit tedious and annoying, the beginning area of uh, Jolly Rogers Lagoon is one of the easiest in the game to get uh, Jiggy's Cheeto pages and such. So yeah, you're gonna wanna make sure that you do that. Jolly Rogers Lagoon also is one of the uh, areas in the game where you actually, where the whole you need to come back later with different power-ups abilities starts to really come in full force. Like for example, here this uh, like little beach area with Tip Top from Donkey mm. Diddy Kong Racing. This entire area is going to be a complete waste of time until you get an ability in the seventh level, which is like near the end of the game. Like for example, he's talking about how his baby is late and you need to hatch his egg. We don't get that ability until. Okay, I'm sorry. We don't get that ability in, until next level. I, I lied. I just don't do the, that jiggy until the seventh level because we get a different ability. Uh, we, there's something else that you need to get with an ability from that level. Never mind. I'm, I'm making no sense. Anyway, yeah. Uh, once you get the ability to hatch eggs, you can get him. But for the time being, he's just sort of a, 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 a cameo. But there's a lot of stuff in Jolly Rogers Lagoon like that. So this is the, I think, I consider this sort of the turning point in the game where it stops being such a, you know, a traditional level level to level sort of uh, game with some stuff you can get by backtracking to more of an open world adventure sort of uh, style where you can do pretty much anything in any order as soon as you get the uh, the different uh, jam jars power-ups in the game because you know uh, by the time you get to this point you're several jiggies uh, if you've been fault doing things the way I have at least and getting all the jiggies in the level as you as soon as you can you could probably explore like two or three more levels after this you could definitely get to pterodactyl land by this point but you might even get uh, have grunty's industries open too yeah uh, you can explore most of the world by this point if you're getting as many jiggies as you can so you know doing things in the specific order at by this point is isn't really a necessity anymore. You can just sort of, you know, explore at your own play pace, get, uh, explore the levels that you want to explore. Because, like, if you don't like water levels, and just, just a brief warning here, Jolly Rogers Lagoon is a water level, um, you, you can skip it, you know? You can come back to it later when you're in the better mood for that sort of thing. And where you don't want to keep on trying to climb up the side of a building. Jesus Christ, why did that take so long? Eh. Anyway, you're gonna want to remember to pick up that Jinjo there because, you know, that's an easy one to miss. Anyway, who? This is a cameo. This is Captain Blubber with his, with his burpy sound effects. Yeah, um, you might, I think this is the point where I was, when I was recording this, where, you know, I, I recorded most of this in, uh, just a few takes. I recorded the first few levels all at once. I was recording this section, and she, my mom heard the, the Captain Blubber burps, and that's when she realized I was playing banjo, banjo, because it's just like, it's such a recognizable sound effect, where it's just like, it's that burping thing, and it's just, you know, it's, it's toilet humor, because burps, even though you don't really burp in the toilet very often. But anyway, it's gross and recognizable, and it's nice to see him again because he's a recurring character. You know, it, it's just nice to see that he got out of that weird alternate dimension thing that was Ter Ezra Tove Cove, and he's doing pretty well for himself after that. I mean, he's down on his luck, but, you know... At the end of the game, you see that he sort of turns that around, and it's nice to see characters not dead for once. Not dead or in, like, dire straits or anything like that, you know? It's just like, give him his money, he's happy, sweet. It's one of the easiest, it's one of the easiest Jinjos in the entire game to get to. You just grab two doubloons, and you get those speed shoes, and you can, you know, sort of Jesus across the water and grab that Jinjo. 
that's basically how this entire upper section of the level works, though. Basically, you talk to one of the townspeople, you give them a doubloon, or you give them as many doubloons as you want to get, or as you need to give them, and then you get the stuff, and then you get the stuff you need to get, like a jiggy or whatever. You're gonna want to collect most of the jiggies in the level. I think there's like 20 something, and there is enough. Uh, there is an. Oh, did I just say jiggies? Oh yeah. Well, you're gonna want to get all of the doubloons that you can find in this level. I think there's like 20 something in total, and if you get all of them. Uh, that you're gonna need all of them if you want to get all of the stuff because the stuff in the thrift shops obnoxiously expensive but you know if there is enough doubloons lying around for you to uh, for you to buy everything legitimately even though there is a way that you can cheat the game out of a couple of those doubloons so you can save some for yourself to keep in your inventory and never ever use again Anywho, uh, this is part of what I was talking about where I said that this is the point where you're expected to backtrack a little bit more. Um, this mission right there, uh, here with the pigs and cleaning up their, uh, their pool and making it warmer, you can't do that until the very, 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 very end of the game. It's one of the last jiggies you get, uh, basically. So, yeah, don't expect to be getting that one for a really long time. And at least the game's nice enough to let you, um to let you know that because it says yeah we're probably not going to be able to get this one for a while so that's your clue to ignore it for the time being and just you know move on to other things well i should say ignore warming up the pool because there is a very very easy way to get it clean which you do um which you can do pretty much immediately and i recommend doing it immediately just because it's on the way and you don't want to have to worry about more backtracking and glitter well, I was gonna say Glitter Golf Run, but you don't want to worry about more backtracking in Jolly Rogers Lagoon, because being honest, it's not one of my favorite levels in the game. I mean, I enjoy it well enough, but the thing is, is that it's just, you know, um, part of the, the, the dual nature uh, aspects of the level where, you know, half of it is, uh, a, where half of it's just, you know, this sort of odd, um, town sort of affair. I, I like that, that it's original, but on the second... But the second half of the level, uh, once we get to the more meaty, more traditional banjo-style level aspects of this level, you know, that's going to be, that's sort of annoying, and I don't really like uh, dealing with that part, but it's not too big of a deal, you know? Also, that sign right there is your, um, is your hint that you need to blow up Mumble's skull in order to get to Tip Top. You can see him in, like, the, the Turtle View Cave, or whatever it's called. There's a there's an ability for Kazooie in there, too, which I think we're going to be getting later this part. But, we're, um, but the only way to really get to him is through Mumbo's skull. Anyway, this is another sneak peek at another level in the game. Basically, this is Grunty's Industries, which is level 6, I believe. And we go in here early in order to turn off the toxic waste in, um, in Grunty's. The, the, the pig's little pool there. Now, you can do this basically whenever, but I recommend doing it now because you need to jump up. There's a there's a empty honeycomb up there in that grip grab section, and you need to get up there in order to jump down and, uh, and do the uh, button pressing thing anyway. So since you're already going to be up there for that uh, empty honeycomb, no matter what you're doing, I just figure it's your best use of time to just take care of that now. You know, you can do it whenever, and I assume that they have different dialogue for if you do it for when you do the cooling down the pool before the making a clean part uh, first. But I've never done that. I've always cleaned it up and then uh, uh, warmed it up. So yeah, um, I don't know what the dialogue's like if you do it in the reverse order, but I assume it's not too big of a deal, you know. But I'm sure they had to write it. I'm sure they had to write it. It's just like, wow, our pool's warm, thanks, but it's still a toxic slug that'll turn your normal turtles into teenage mutant ninja variety. Anywho, uh, in order to get the last of the doubloons, or I shouldn't say the last of the doubloons, I should say um, most of the rest of the doubloons, there's a couple that's hidden kind of cleverly in the bar. You're gonna want to go. Uh, you're gonna want to go on that shock jump pad that I unearthed at the very beginning of the level. But you can only do it as Kazooie, though, because Kazooie, Kazooie, and this is actually an attention to detail I like. Kazooie shock jump pads higher than Banjo does, because you know she she weighs less, because there's no fat bear dragging her down there. 
Anywho, um, what we got here from Jam Jars isn't necessarily like a required ability, but it's helpful. Basically, it's the Wing Whack, and it allows us to uh, attack with Kazooie without having to waste our eggs, which is nice. However, that's not really its most important feature, though. What its most important feature is, is actually allowing us to get a little bit more um, distance with our jumps as Kazooie. We get a better way to do this later on, but you can see a sort of kind of sequence break if you wing whack in the right ways as cer at certain points. Basically, well, it, it increases our horizontal jumping uh, distance quite a bit, so you're going to want to make sure to do that whenever you get the chance. Anywho, this is Jolly's Bar, but the most important thing you're going to want to do, and the thing that I always forgot to do when I was a kid, is you're going to want to look through that little hidey hole with the egg aim and blow up the side of his house, of his uh, uh, establishment. Yeah, um, uh, Jolly, I hope you didn't want to keep that security deposit. Anyway, uh, here is Jolly Roger, our kind of uncomfortable gay stereotype for the game. Basically, he's giving us one of our more overarching missions in Jolly Roger's Lagoon, and it's one of the only things in the in this town section that isn't just sort of segregated to the town section. Now, this is something that actually uh, applies to the second half of the level, where he's asking, he's looking for his uh, his partner, the uncomfortable lesbian stereotype frog, and we're going to uh, not we're not going to find her until we get to the second half of the level, so just keep that in mind for the time being. Anyway, um, the most important thing that you need to know is that he'll offer you a chance to buy what's, uh, to buy a room for the night, which you can spend, like, a couple of, uh, doubloons on. However, you can get it for free if you just use a grenade egg and blow open the door. So yeah, um, there is enough, uh, there are enough doubloons in the level in order to pay for the room and also get the other stuff, but you're going to have to search for a more hidden, for a couple of hidden extra doubloons that are in, like, that are actually in the bar, but you don't get them by picking them up, you get them by talking to a certain person. And we're not going to be able to see that person until I get through this, uh, jam jar section. Basically, what this ability that he gives us, the Aquatic Egg Game ability, basically lets us fight underwater. It functions almost identically to the Aerial Egg Game ability. And I'm not showing it off right now for some reason. I don't know why. Um, basically, there's another person inside the bar. There's, a, like, a pirate dude. And you can talk to him and get some uh, jiggies. Well, um, not, not jiggies. You can get some doubloons from him, is basically what I was trying to say. Wait, am I doing it now? Oh yeah, now I'm doing it. I, I forgot. I didn't already get them. I need to use Kazooie in order to get these doubloons, and then I think we're gonna go talk to the dude in the bar. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's been a while since I recorded this, guys. It's been... It's been like six months. You can't blame me for forgetting a few of the, the tiny details, you know? It's just like, I forget things. It happens and stuff. And nay, and I am I talking like the Fonz, or a really bad impression of the Fonz. And Banjo, what the hell were you doing in there? Anywho, this is the thrift shop where you can find a couple of cameos from Banjo-Kazooie 1. Like, they had one of those paintings of, um of, uh, Grunty's other sister, the, the, the Wicked Witch of the, not the Wicked Witch, the Good Witch of the North, whatever her name is. Anyway, uh, the thrift shop, basically, uh, you pop some tags, and you buy a Jiggy and a Cheeto page from this cheap asshole. It costs a ton of doubloons, though, and that's where you're going to be spending most of them, is in this thrift shop trying to get the Jiggy and the Cheeto page. Thankfully, though, collecting most of them isn't really too big of a deal. Like, it's not really all that hard or anything. So you can get them pretty easily, if a bit tediously. It's one of the more straightforward Jiggies in the game, where it's just like, how do you get a Jiggy? How about you buy one? That works, write that down. Let's put that in that town section of the level that we have trouble putting stuff into. So yeah, um, this cheap asshole, you just buy a jiggy from him. Who the hell put this up for, like, a pond? Or put this up to be pond? I have no clue. But, yeah. Oh, with that, we've also gotten a third of the jiggies in the game, so yay us, right? Awesome. Anywho, you can get the Jiggy and then just leave, but what you don't might uh, miss the first time you play the game is that you have to go back in in order for the Cheeto page to be put up for sale. I think it's like five? 
I I'm pretty sure it's five doubloons, so it's not too big of a it's not too big of a deal to get. But yeah, you're gonna want to get those. You're gonna want to get this right away before you forget about it. I just like I like getting the Cheeto pages as soon as I can come in contact with them because. For the most part, in almost every single level, ironically, except for this one, you can get every single Cheeto page as soon as you come across it. Uh, Jolly Rogers Lagoon is the only level, uh, as far as I can remember at the very least, where you can't get all the Cheeto pages on your first run through. And I'll make sure to note that Cheeto page when we come across it. You know, I'll tell you, okay, this is the Cheeto page that you can't get on your first uh, run through. You're going to have to come back with a later ability. And that's a little bit annoying, just because a Cheeto page isn't something as, like, necessary necessary as a like a jiggy or something like that and it's not as immediately helpful as more health but i do like getting them because some of the some, the, the, the usefulness of the the cheats is exponential where getting more feathers is nice but it's not that great but then getting eggs is really good and the stuff you get back at the stuff you get after that just keeps on getting better and better and better so that's why the i like getting the cheeto pages because it just once you start getting more and more and more of them the rewards just keep on getting better and better like they should because you know it's just it's like it's like this is like the extra unlockable game breaking stuff the cheeto pages which is sort of odd considering that they're one of the easier things to find in the levels but you know whatever anywho here we have mumbo and mumbo is actually sort of underutilized in this level i think you know I, really for the most part he just sort of seems like he's here just so that oh crap we need mumbo um <clears throat> we need our mumbo in every level so quick let's just give him one thing to do and then you know we can just leave him be for the rest of the, the le rest of the level basically mumbo uses his mumbo pad to oxygenize the water down there yes the rest of the level, the second half of the level, is a water level. And you know how much everybody loves water levels. Do 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 But yes, um, unfortunately, as you might have noticed, doing an underwater level on Panjo Kazooie is kind of annoying because, yeah, they need to breathe. So basically, in order to have like a free roaming uh, like truly 3d underwater level experience you need to get that air meter out of the way so that's what mumbo is for you have him oxygenize the water and then you can breathe under there as much as you want well i should say you can breathe in any of the water in raleigh waters lagoon as much as you want you don't need to worry about air bubbles for the rest of the for the rest of the level although i still recommend getting the faster swimming from the goldfish before doing this level because yeah, trying to do Jolly Rogers Lagoon without that is really, really, really fucking annoying. Anywho, next time on Let's Play Banjo Tooie, we're going to start exploring the underwater sections of this level. I'm X and Shadow, and I'll see you guys later.